Uh, my SLSR from the beginning. My name's Deb Goodkin. I'm the executive director of the FreeBSD Foundation, and I'm here to represent the FreeBSD project and talk about FreeBSD. And it's it's sort of similar to Benny's talk, uh, introduction of FreeBSD, but I also try to incorporate things for people who are already involved in the community too. And so, uh, so if you are a contributor already, some things might be new, some things might you already know. Uh, so I, I try to make it so it was uh, informative and welcome, welcoming talk to um, people from all areas. And the talk that I'm giving now is a talk I typically give to uh, people at like Linux conferences and other open source conferences around the world. So we will get started here. So my goal today is to share the long history and I know Benny, um, so actually I'm sort of assuming a lot of people in here um, it was here for the previous talk, but I, but also I know a lot of people left, so uh, there's probably a lot of new people in here. So first I want to start, before I go over the goals of my talk, is to find out, so who is new to BSD in general? So good, that's a good number, so that's awesome. And who and, um, and who in here uses Linux? Okay, so almost everyone in here raised their hand. Uh, so, uh, so that's okay. So my goal here is to um, is to share um, information and in our history about FreeBSD in particular, and I'm going to talk about why people use it, what FreeBSD is, and why you should use it, and maybe hopefully contribute to our project. And then lastly, I'm going to highlight what we as the foundation and project, what we've been doing around the world and um, in advocating for the project. So I'll start with free, what is free BSD, since there's a lot of people in here who are new to the BSDs. And, um, and so I assume that's also free BSD. So, so I put, I use this slide. <laughs> And not to be mean to Tux, because I think Tux is really cute. And, um, but it's really, uh, a lot of people um, do still think that FreeBSD is a Linux distribution. And so I use this to make a point that, that it's not. It's totally separate. And, I'm gonna, and, and it came from a different place. And so I'm going to highlight that. But I want to share this <laughs> slide here, too. <laughs> right? And this is recent. I mean, this was, I think... Um, opensource.com, which is, uh, it's basically a um, website that's hosted by Red Hat, and, uh, and they were doing this poll. And, um, and so this is another reason why people get confused that, you know, I mean, if I were new to Unix and Linux and, you know, any of, any of the Unix-like type of operating systems, I would just think that FreeBSD was another distribution. And so... What's that? I know. I wonder. Well, we could probably find out. And so, and I did read in the comments too on here that one of the reasons why they did this uh, was because they wanted to include FreeBSD. But what they really should have done was, what's your favorite Unix-like um, operating system? And I think that would have been better for at least for us. Well, and, and I think for for people in the world. So FreeBSD. I look at FreeBSD, the FreeBSD world, as three different components. And so on the, on the top there, you have the actual op, open or the open source operating system. It's the binary that you download off the freebsd.org website onto your computer and you run it. The middle one there is the actual project. And there are some people here from the community, but the project is made up of thousands of contributors. And then the last one is the foundation. And that's what I run and represent. And um, and we are a 501c3, which is U.S. Um, it's a um, designation within our government and how we file taxes. And what it means basically is we're a public charity and we are for the public good. And so our whole focus is to support the project and the community. So we're not a trade association, which is what the Linux Foundation is. Uh, we're actually uh, here for the community, for the project, and, and to support them. So what is FreeBSD? I mean, it's one of the oldest, largest, most successful open source projects in the world. And we've been around, we'll be celebrating our 27th anniversary in June. 
and it's a complete operating system. So when you think of, so I, so I will compare um, uh, FreeBSD with, with Linux just because that's what most people are familiar with. But Linux, when you talk about Linux, that's the kernel. And so then you have all, all these distributions. That's why you have this whole list of distributions. And that puts the whole operating system together. So when you're running your computer, you're not just running Linux. You have to have that whole uh, user lend the tools, documentation, all of that kind of stuff. So FreeBSD is all of that. It's this very cohesive, coherent operating system. We support over 33. Actually, I think the number the number increases every day. We may be at 35,000 third-party uh, packages, which really means that when you're using it as your desktop and you want to access the internet, you could um, have a browser that you can install, you know, a word processor, and whatever software that you want to use. You uh, almost anything is, is supported. Uh, like I said, we have over 1,000 contributors or thousands. We have uh, 400, uh, between 400 and 500 active uh, source committers. And we run on many platforms. And, and, and so it's hardware as well as, as cloud platforms. And, uh, and there's millions of deployments out there. So I saw this from uh, uh, someone from Netflix gave a talk last year at the main track. Actually, it was really good. And, um, and so I actually stole his abridged uh, version of where FreeBSD came from because I really liked it. But I added nice graphics to mine. And, uh, but it's really AT&T Unix started in 1969. And, um, and so you may, have, you may be familiar with the anniversary that was celebrated. I, I think it was last November in um, New Jersey where Unix was created. And then the BSD started um, from that. It was AT&T. Actually, if you heard Warner Lasha's talk yesterday, um, or if you didn't, I would recommend uh, watching the video of it. He gave a talk in the main track on uh, the early Unixes. It was really interesting. So. Um, so that's available, as well as, I, I believe Mad Dog, uh, John Hall is giving a talk, a keynote later today. On, he, uh, he's like the Google of Unix and, and computing. He's pretty, he's amazing. So, uh, so I would recommend both, both those talks. And, uh, but the BSD is Berkeley Software Distribution. And, um, and so, Ber so Unix was licensed to a few universities and Berkeley was one of them. They come, came up with Berkeley Unix. It's also referred to Berkeley Software Distribution or Berkeley Research Unix. There's various names of it. And, and that's where a team of people actually worked on improving it. And, um, and it became the platform for FreeBSD and NetBSD. And so this is a little uh, visual of the timeline. Let's see if I can get it to play. Where, so I just talked about how Unix started in 69. And then um, you know, the C language was uh, developed there to make it more portable. And, um, and then different versions of BSD, some of the research and features that were added uh, to it. Yeah, I'm not going to go over each one. Because for me, really what I care about is in 1993, FreeBSD starting. And that's also when NetBSD started. So let's see if I can stop this. But we have a great timeline on our website. And when I say our website, it's the freebsdfoundation.org website. And it was, it was fun to put together. So let me start again because I just, let's see here. Let me show from here. And what's happened? Wait, here, here we go. Yeah, a little technical difficulty here. Um, so it's starting there, and I believe I need to go here. So I know this is actually this is nice because everyone's pretty close in. So I like to use this because it really shows the lineage of FreeBSD. It shows. Unix at the top and how it branched into a lot of proprietary, closed source type of operating systems. I mean, when I graduated college, which was um, a few years ago, I used IBM AIX. <laughs> and so um, it was sort of in the prehistoric days. And, um, and, we, and so that's what we used at, I, 
IBM, and it was actually before PCs came out. And, but HP had their version, and various companies, like those large corporations, they had their version of Unix. And, but if you see, if you look here on your left, and so here I zoom in a little bit more. So what I'm trying to show here is the lineage of FreeBSD and how it descended from the Berkeley Unix, which descended from the original Unix that was developed by Ken Thompson in 69. And, and then I include, or I have an arrow there um, on the left of, of Linux and how, um, I mean, it didn't just magically appear, but he did base it on, he did model it after Unix, but, um, but it didn't descend from that, from that, uh, you know, years of development. And when you look at the people who uh, worked on BSD at Berkeley, they were, uh, they were university students, they were mostly PhD students. Some of the people, uh, Bill Joy, if you don't know who he is, I mean, he's one of the co-founders of Sun, and he oversaw the uh, BSD project. And so you had um, these years of development at Berkeley of these college students. So if they're PhD students, they're probably you know, like in their early 20s. And so then when FreeBSD started a decade later, then you actually, we still had a lot of those people continuing to support and develop on it. So the difference in age, when you look at when Linux started versus when uh, FreeBSD continued or, or started that you actually had 10 years difference in uh, the age of the developers. And so you had sort of a more mature group of people who were developing that. And you can look at that in you know, two different ways. You can say, well, it was young and you know, maybe it's more innovative. It's, but it's, you know, but it's, I'm just trying to highlight what the differences were in the, um, the people who were part of that. So who uses FreeBSD? So, I mean, when I tell people that you know, you're probably using FreeBSD, they're always surprised because most people haven't heard of FreeBSD before. But what I did here, the, these aren't the only companies that use FreeBSD. I, what we try to do was choose marquee companies, recognizable companies that you're familiar with that use FreeBSD. So most likely you use FreeBSD. I mean, if you have an iPhone, uh, you know, Mac OS and iOS uh, were developed from uh, FreeBSD. They still follow for the, um, the command line. They actually come to our conferences still. Uh, Netflix is a big known company that uses FreeBSD for the high performance they, they get on the streaming. So when you're watching a Netflix uh, video, what, you know, TV show, whatever, uh, that's all streaming on FreeBSD servers. Trivago, uh, the PlayStation, and I understand the 5.2 will be free BSD. So I won't go through all these bullets, but but really, you know, the the main reason why people, why users use free BSD, and and it will be different between like a individual user like us in this room versus like a corporation, a corporation like say Sony is a good example why they may use FreeBSD is because uh, of the licensing. And so we do follow the BSD license. And so Linux is GPL, FreeBSD is BSD, and so it's a permissive license, which means you can take the code and you can make your own changes and you don't have to give it back to the community. And it's a philosophy that the community believes in, that they are happy that someone else is using their code. So they don't feel the need that they need to get recognition for it. And, but there's also companies that use it for the same reason, but that they actually upstream almost all their changes. So Netflix actually is a really good example of a company that does that. And, uh, and I would highly recommend watching uh, Jonathan Looney's talk from Fosdem last year. It was in the main track. And he talked about how Netflix follows the uh, developer or current branch of FreeBSD and, um, and how they successfully do that. So it was a really popular uh, and well-received talk. And then uh, just the fact that it's a cohesive operating system and then just its history of development too is another reason why, um, why people like to use FreeBSD. Uh, users like us then will use it because of 
um, you know, st stability and reliability. Actually, that's why companies will use it too, uh, but also for the community. So we're also known as a very friendly and welcoming community too. And the documentation, we're known for excellent documentation. So when you're installing FreeBSD, and I'm actually going through this process right now. So I have FreeBSD on here. Um, I run it on a virtual machine, and, but I also have another, a new laptop that I have at home, so sitting and waiting for me to install FreeBSD. And, um, and since I don't do this a lot, uh, I can uh, search for help on when I run into issues. There's also a really good community that I can reach out to and get questions answered. So how the project works. So first, I'll start off with, uh, since we descended from Berkeley, they had a whole uh, model that they followed on development. Since it was a, a fairly large uh, software development effort on their part and how they control everything. And so we still follow that model. And it's so, uh, so the first thing that I include is just the fact that, so, so I work for the FreeBSD Foundation, and then we have the FreeBSD project. And actually, in the next slide, I think I have a better um, a graphic of this. But we are, we are a separate organization. So we don't run FreeBSD, the project. We can't tell them what to do or have any control. Our whole purpose is to support them. And so if there's any critical needs, uh, any holes in the project, then uh, if we have the funding, we step in and, and help fill those needs. We have a core team. Actually, one of the core team members, he's not in this room right now, but he's, we do have a free BSD table in, uh, uh, let's see, what room? Uh, one of the buildings. <laughs> in H, I think. Okay, no, 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 yeah. So it's the main building where when you go in and, and they had the FOSDOM t-shirts and all that kind of stuff. So we're there. And, um, and so Benedict represents the core team, and that's actually um, elected every two years. We're coming up for elections in, I believe, May, and anyone who's a committer has a vote. And, um, and then it's a mentoring system to get your commit bit. So, if, so for example, um, I'm doing documentation, and so I submit patches for changes, and so eventually someone will recognize that, and then they'll offer me uh, mentorship, and then uh, hopefully I'll get my commit bit that way. I just need a little more time to do that. And it's very collaborative. So this is my version of org chart for the project. So it's nothing official, and really I didn't have room for all the, the, the functional teams. But basically we have these functional teams. And it's a great way to sort of organize how things are supported within the project and it also allows people who are interested in different areas to get involved in those areas that they're interested in so say for example if you're interested in security then you and and you have background then you can be part of the security team we have release and, and ports and so we have various different type of functional teams that make up the project and then the way I did it was sort of you know a top-down approach where you have the core team and the core team is basically like a, um, I, I view them as like the um, the board of directors of the project and so they oversee it but they also don't have control you can I mean as a developer you can work on what you're interested in working on and that's philosophy of the project and the core team steps in to help with um, you know, sometimes it's administration, and sometimes it's, uh, you know, developer relationships. But they're sort of like those managers that you go to. And so I just talked about the core team, and, and that's actually a list of what, what they work on. And so what I'm trying to point out here is that we don't have one person who oversees the whole project and has the yay or nay on what goes in or how things are run. So it is definitely democratically run. And I like to show this graph. So we did this graph back in, um, so about a half a year ago. And, and what I'm trying to highlight here is the age distribution of our, and this is actually the committer, so not all the thousands of contributors we have. And, and showing not only are we diverse as far as countries and cultures represented, but also age. So we are getting new people involved in the project and and probably more importantly getting younger people involved too because they're the ones who are going to continue the one the age you know near the end of that graph a lot of those are actually people who've been with the with FreeBSD and BSD since the beginning 
which is really cool because we have new people who are joining and, and we love working with them. And we have these uh, older, more experienced people who are part of the project and know the history. And, and they're so welcoming that they love talking to the younger people and, and helping them along with the project. And so it, it's really neat to see. So how the releases work. Um, so it's, it's basically the, so we follow this, the principle of least astonishment. And it's basically things work, don't, don't change them. And don't, don't break things that already work. And, um, and also across major releases. So when, you, when we have a new release, then it's going to, you know, I don't know, 99% that, you know, confidence that it will work, that you won't have to um, back out that um, that update. So we have two types of releases, major and the uh, point releases. And so right now where we're at is the next major release will be 13.0. Uh, there isn't a schedule for that yet, but I, I would guess the end of the year, early next year, it's every couple of years uh, where uh, there's a release schedule for 12.2 to come out and I believe 11.4. And, um, and so we also have these sort of policies or rules of not breaking the ABIs and APIs. And then, like I mentioned earlier with Netflix, we have the, the two different uh, branches. And so we call them current, also referred to as a developer branch, and then the stable branch. And so, like, so for example, on my computer that I'm installing FreeBSD, I'm actually using the current branch. So it's the latest and greatest version of FreeBSD. And what, what we do is we, we, as a project, provide what's called a snapshot. And so every week, those are run. And so that's the image that I'll, I downloaded on my system. But if you're, you know, if you, but if you want a more stable, not the development branch, then we have the stable branch too that a lot of people use. So, like, if I, if we do, we hold workshops at universities and, and various places, and um, and we'll always use the stable branch for that. So, how you can, or how you contribute to the project? Uh, there's very many ways you can contribute. Like I said, um, I write documentation. Um, I don't write code. Um, so my background, so my background is in operating systems, even though I've been working with them now for almost 15 years, and I'm trying to learn as much as I can. But my background is in, I was a firmware engineer for many years for storage devices, which is so different than operating systems. So that's why I, um, I could get back into writing code, but I choose not to, and I'm doing it because I'm already running the foundation, so it would be difficult. But it's easy to get started contributing, and some of the suggestions that we have would be uh, one would be is work on documentation so you could translate or improve the documentation um, you could there's many ports like i was saying there's over 33,000, and so we always need ports maintainers and uh, you could just go through the peer list and and pick a uh, you know a problem out there that you could fix and submit a patch for and so, yes, so earlier I talked about why people or why users use FreeBSD. This is a list of why uh, companies will use FreeBSD. And, um, and really, if someone asked me, I would say the two top reasons really, so the license and, um, and then ZFS. And especially for uh, data centers, uh, people who really want that um, you know, that reliability that they use ZFS and it's been supported in FreeBSD for a very long time. And all, all these places where FreeBSD stands out. And, uh, and the one thing that we don't have on here that we are working on is uh, support on the laptop. And so that's always an issue, especially with people like us, that we want. Um... Oh, that's why I wasn't sure if that was like a fire alarm. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, and that, so that's an area that we are working on. It's, it's a hard area to support because you have so many different you know, technologies and then you get new ones, new generations of technologies, CPUs and um, everything. And so we're, but we as a foundation actually are working on trying to support some of the newer hardware so more people can get FreeBSD running on their laptops. 
Oh, I am highlighting some of the kernel features here. I'm not going to go through each one. It's basically a list of the uh, a typical kernel that has to uh, work in this day. The user one features are more um, what what I think sets us apart as far as making it a coherent system that our user land is developed and tested and integrated with the kernel from our uh, from our community. So it's one group of people that are working on all of this. And so it's very consistent, coherent, and integrated. Some of the other fe features we're known about, so like I said, uh, ZFS, and, uh, and we're very active in the OpenZFS project, Dtrace, which was brought over from Sun uh, back in, I think it was about 2005. It's a dynamic tracing tool. Uh, the jails, I mean, we, f we really came out with the first containerization. And actually, there are uh, projects that are working to, um, you know, productize that a little bit better. Beehive, actually, I just came from Australia for Linux Comp AU, and when the original Beehive developers gave a talk there, and he's getting involved in the project again, it was originally developed for NetApp, and uh, then they open sourced it. And so, uh, so that's been a very successful feature. And the TCP IP, we're still used as reference platform, even though that was originally developed in, in BSD. And Capsicum actually is getting. Um, a little more um, publicity, I mean, it's very recent. Well, they've been working on this for years, and it's coming out of the University of Cambridge, and they're working with ARM on a recently announced project that ARM is integrating the instruction set into uh, a version, a CPU version that will be on a, what's called the Morella board, and that will be very secure, and they have uh, millions of uh, pounds funding for this project and FreeBSD has been working on this for I think they've been working on it for five years so it's very promising for um, you know secure platform um, maybe IOT area and um, and but a great collaborative effort with FreeBSD and ARM so I'll talk a little bit about the FreeBSD Foundation so you understand who we are. And we are celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. We're going to celebrate it all year, but it, we were founded in March 2000. We are based in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, that's, where, that's where I am based. And, um, but we are a distributed organization. We're very, we're, we're very small. Uh, I have... I haven't counted recently, but I think I have six to eight employees, and I mean we have interns too, so that's why. Uh, but we have an office up in Canada too, in the uh, Waterloo area, and so we have a lot of development going on up there. And then we have a board of eight board members, and we do have um, uh, Benedict, who's down at the table. He's also on our board. We are 100% funded by donations, so we're not a membership organization, and so we do reach out to companies and ask them to help uh, help fund our efforts. And um, and so we're constantly doing that. If your company is using FreeBSD and benefiting, then I would ask if you could either connect me with the right people or ask your company to to, to help us with our funding. The more money we get, the more a software development that we could do, as well as advocacy for the project. So this list, I know this, so I don't know, you might be able to read this. So what I try to do with this, and this is where the FreeBSD around the world comes from. So we went to, we participated in 38 conferences in 21 countries. This was all last year. And the whole reason is to raise awareness about FreeBSD. And so, at a minimum, people understand what FreeBSD is, and hopefully, you know, spark an interest in people trying FreeBSD, and hopefully, either becoming a user or contributing back to the project. And so, you can see here. Basically, I went in order, so I didn't go by country or anything. And this doesn't include uh, BSD conferences or just conferences that we sponsor around the world. But one thing I do want to point out here is that 
um, like Open Source Summit, uh, we did give a FreeBSD talk at both of them, the North America and the uh, European one. And if you don't know, Open Source Summit is a, a Linux Foundation conference. It used to be called LinuxCon. And so it's really important that we include our voice in these open source conferences. And that's what we're doing. And so, um, so I actually included a list of sort of the, like the key conferences that we're going to be at or that are happening this year. Uh, I mean, as far as conferences we're going to be at, it's, we have a really long list like that one earlier. But if you're interested in getting involved and or finding out more about FreeBSD, the, we have three major BSD conferences that I have listed up here, as well as other conferences that we're at. So people, so this slide really is for people who are part of the community already, or people who who want to get involved and who want to help us advocate for FreeBSD. And so, what? Because I wasn't sure what who all was going to be in my talk. And so with this slide, I was hoping to convince people to go out there to to come to conferences like this. Actually, this is one of our best represented conference, I think, because we have. Uh, well, we had Rodrigo, who he organizes this room, and a lot of people from the community come. And if you go to our table, you'll see that not only are there usually like four people behind the stand, but there's actually a group of us in front of it. And, and it's just because there's so many of us, we can't all stand behind it. And so it's, so it's a great conference for us. So to, so to go to a conference, go to a Linux conference. And my slides are available to share, to introduce people to FreeBSD. And or go to a meetup or run a meetup or go to university. And, and these are all things that we're doing. It's just that the foundation is very small and we can't get to all these places. And you can install you could hold an install fest, which basically means that you go to some you go to a meetup and everyone brings their little laptop, you install VirtualBox or some VM, install FreeBSD, and that's just the basic. And now you can start playing with FreeBSD and learn about it. And I have resources actually on the right of that slide is a list of a lot of the resources that we do provide from flyers to stickers. Someone was asking me earlier about could they get the uh, like PDF for the stickers, and um, and so we do have people who run their their local events and they print their own or have their own stickers made. So this slide I like to use for when I go to like a Linux conference for people who are new to FreeBSD. And um, I love this graphic, and I don't know who did it, and I wish I did, because I'll probably someday get in trouble for using it. But, uh, but it's showing us working together. And, um, and so why should we work together? It's, um, I mean, first, so say you're in here and, and you're just learning about FreeBSD and you have no interest in, in switching, but you're a Linux, I don't know, sysadmin. This way, I mean, it's so important just to have that knowledge, understand how other operating systems work. And, um, and it'll just make you better at what you do. Because you may say, I hate how they do all of this stuff. So I'm going to do, you know, my whatever, my development, my work better. And that's, that is how you improve things. So we really could learn from each other, whether it's successes or failures. And, um, and we do have different coding methodologies and philosophies, and so understanding the reasons for both. And so I do know people who contribute, especially developers who contribute to FreeBSD, uh, companies like Google and Facebook uh, try to hire them, which is really bad for us because they don't usually contribute anymore. But it's, it is a good way to get really good training. And, um, and they have, we just have a good reputation for pr producing uh, very good software developers, and that's why that happens. Our code base is smaller, and so it's a great reference platform. So for learning about open so or learning about operating systems, uh, it's, so you, so I mean, so we have. Uh, if you just compare the two kernels, so we have about uh, five and a half million lines of code, and uh, Linux is thirty-five or more million lines of code. So right there, you can see like, well, if I just want to look at source code, I'd pro and you know that they're both good, 
uh, then I would choose a smaller one because it's going to be easier to find what you're interested in or what you're looking, um, you know, to find what you're looking for. Uh, FreeBSD, if you look at the whole operating system, it's about 17 million lines of code. So, and uh, uh, distribu Linux distribution, I don't, I can't even tell you how many lines of code because they're all going to be different too. But it just gives you an idea that it's a great place to learn about operating systems. It's a, if you're interested in becoming a system programmer or to improve your system programming skills, then it's a great way to do that with uh, FreeBSD. And I had that quote because this was one I found when I was just reading. Uh, I forgot what, where I was reading this at. But I thought this was a really good point that this person said that they became a better Linux admin by learning about FreeBSD. So I think that that's really important. And so why I contribute to FreeBSD, and I, I know I, like, I could actually make like probably a book on this, and that's why I try to squeeze as much as I can, because here is why I'm trying to convince people to contribute to FreeBSD. But it is a very inclusive and welcoming uh, community. I, well, so we had a developer summit on Friday, and there's a contributor, and I, I can't remember how many years she's been involved in the project. I just met her for the first time here. And she uh, submitted a patch, and she, and so she tweeted it. I just submitted my first patch to um, FreeBSD, and everyone's like, you know, commenting like congratulations and all this stuff, which is great because then it makes you want to contribute more, as well as also people are there reviewing and giving you constructive feedback too. So we're assuming people aren't perfect when, you know, when they start contributing. Uh, like I said, it's a great way to learn about operating systems. And because of the size of the project, since it is smaller, it's, it's easier to make a more notable contribution. So we've had, like, some of our interns, I mean, they've become sort of the, like, main people. Like, on Risk Five is a really good example of one of my interns. And, um, and so it is, it's much easier to, uh, to stand out or to become an expert in a particular area that you're interested in and get involved. Um, and like I said earlier, some of those uh, original people like Kirk McCusick, he's one of the original BSD developers and from Berkeley, and he's on my board, and he's still very involved in the project. I mean, you go to a conference, and he's there, and he's there talking to people, and he's not, uh, you know, uh, I mean, you don't have to line up to talk to him. He's just very approachable and, and very friendly, too. And, um, and then the fact that it's democratically run, too. That, um, that makes a difference as far as getting your contributions accepted. So what I would recommend is if you're interested in trying out FreeBSD, just to try it. And there's many ways of doing that from, like I have it, like I was saying, that I have VirtualBox, that's typically how we do it with a workshop. Uh, but you could actually get an account on Azure, um, AWS, they have free accounts for uh, new people, and a digital ocean actually is another one that's really good. And, or, um, or we also have how-to guides on our, web, our website. So the freebsdfoundation.org website does have how-to guides. And so if you want to just install FreeBSD like I'm doing on my other computer, then we have a guide for that. And then this last one, I think the slide will disappear. Uh, but this is some of the main resources that I use and, and most people will use for getting um, more information about FreeBSD. And, um, but there's a lot more information. It's really, you know, just Google for uh, FreeBSD and you can get what you, hopefully what you want to know about FreeBSD. And there's also a good Facebook group there too, but there's forums, email lists. There's many different ways to engage with the community. So I have uh, one minute left, which I timed it perfectly, so I wouldn't get too many questions. But no, I'm kidding. But um, but if you do have questions, um, I, I will take questions now. But the other thing too is we do have that table. Uh, I'll be down there, but also we do have developers down there who. So if you have real, t you know, specific or t you know technical questions, that they should be able to answer those for you. So anything in this last 53 seconds that I have. <laughs> So who's going to try FreeBSD now? That's awesome. Okay. Okay. That's great. Okay. Well, that's all I have. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.